Hello, I'm Martin Looker from Silicon Labs. Welcome to this video where we'll be taking a quick look at a new feature in the Matter 1.4 specification. This new feature allows intermittent connected devices, ICDs, to increase their maximum permitted sleep period from 15 seconds all the way up to 18 hours. Up until now, all sleeping devices have been using short idle times, referred to as SITs. These devices can only sleep for up to 15 seconds so that data packets being buffered in the parent device don't time out. The top graph you can see in Simplicity Studio's Energy Profiler shows a running SIT and the power spikes are the poles taking place every 15 seconds. This setup is ideal for sleeping devices that need to be reactive to incoming commands, such as a smart lock where it may need to receive a command to lock or unlock at any time. And the sleep period here determines the latency between sending the command and taking the action. The Matter 1.4 specification introduces sleeping devices that use long idle times, or LITs. These can sleep for up to 18 hours. In this scenario, the thread parent device doesn't buffer packets. Instead, the Matter controller is aware of the device's long sleep interval and will only interact when it knows the LIT is available during its active period. The bottom graph shows a running LIT. Notice that it doesn't have the same polling spikes seen in the SIT graph at the top of the display, thus lowering its power consumption. This setup is suited for devices that don't need to react to incoming commands, like a switch which only needs to send attribute reports when its state changes. It doesn't need to react to incoming commands like a lock. For a switch, a matter controller can subscribe to the switch's state. Whenever the state changes, an attribute report is sent with the new state. The switch will also send an attribute report at a defined interval if the state is unchanged. This is to ensure that the matter controller knows the switch is still active. These subscriptions and attribute reports can also be used in other device types, such as sensors. This subscription method applies to both SIT and LIT devices. The difference being that the LIT device does not need to wake every 15 or less seconds to poll its parent. It can remain asleep for the full defined reporting interval. Let's take a look at what that means for power consumption. The SIT running in the top graph and the LIT in the bottom graph are both switches, with the SIT at the top using the maximum allowed 15 second sleep interval. Prior to the Matter 1.4 specification, this was the only way to set up a sleeping switch device. To compare the LIT and SIT power consumption, they are both configured to generate an attribute report every 30 minutes. In the graphs, we can now see the extra power consumption as the attribute reports are made. The LIT consumes more power during this exchange as it needs to send more messages to maintain its place in the network. However, over the two hours this has been running, we can see that overall the LIT has used 27.8 microwatt hours and the SIT 47 microwatt hours. The LIT is using only 60% of the power consumed by the SIT due to it remaining asleep instead of having to wake every 15 seconds to poll. Hopefully this video has shown the power benefits of using the LIT features in the Matter 1.4 specification for sleeping devices that don't need to be reactive to incoming commands. This allows longer battery life if using the same size batteries or the possibility to use a smaller battery and saving space for a similar battery life. With the release of the Silicon Labs Matter extension version 2.4.0 for the Simplicity Studio IDE, the LightSwitch OverThread example application has been updated to operate as a LIT, along with the multi-sensor OverThread example application. Documentation on working with LITs can be found in the Matter Intermittently Connected Devices section 
of the Matter Developer's Guide on docs.scilabs.com. You'll also need an open thread border router that supports this feature. To get started, you can make use of the updated Raspberry Pi Matter Hub image available from the Quick Start Guides for Matter page, also on docs.scilabs.com. You can find links to all these resources in the video description. Thanks for watching.